What's up everyone, John from ARTV. It is spring fever over here at ARTV. Don't get too excited because we're gonna be talking about three different bands today from the indie hemisphere, something that I hope a lot of you guys will be excited about. Hopefully you will discover some new music that maybe you didn't know before because I wasn't super familiar with these artists until like maybe the past year or so, some of them even more recently than that. Today, I am going to be reviewing projects from the band Wallows, who are up and coming, and you might know because of Dylan Minnette. We also have the Aces, an all-girl band that I am very excited about, and also we have the project of Sophie Allison, a young 20-year-old superstar in the indie sphere called Soccer Mommy. That is a recording name, and we're going to be reviewing all the latest projects from these people. So I'm very excited to talk about these today. We'll break it up. I'll put a transition in between each one. We will go through, talk quickly about some of these projects and hopefully pass on some of the reasons why I feel like they're definitely worth checking out. So without further ado, please drop a like on this video, especially if you want to see more from the indie world in the future covered on this channel. And here we go, let's start with Wallows. <laughs> I initially didn't know if I was going to be able to cover the Wallows EP Spring because there were so many releases stacked up for April 6th that was absolutely insane, but fortunately we've hit a bit more of a lull this week so I'm able to catch up on a few things that I missed. Now I had a ton of support and outpouring of requests for you guys talking about like please talk about Wallows, please review their EP, so here we are, let's talk about the Spring EP. You might know a couple of these guys that are in the band. They actually have been together as some sort of band for a decade now. They grew up together, they were born in California, and a couple of them have gotten pretty prominent roles in acting. Braden being in a couple himself, and then Dylan Minnette, obviously known for Don't Breathe, a film that I particularly enjoyed, I found to be actually really good for a horror flick, and also the hit series on Netflix, 13 Reasons Why. They began to release a string of singles that I found to be super, super good. The first one being Pleaser, and then moving into Suntan, Pulling Leaves Off of Trees, which is my absolute favorite Wallow song to date, and of course the track Uncomfortable. I loved every single song, all four of those, but I found myself wanting a full-length album, and unfortunately, while we still haven't gotten that, we did get a start. They have signed to Atlantic Records at this point, and they have their debut EP, Spring. Now with the songs on this EP, I'm finding them to be a little bit more flat, and honestly, especially on my first few listens, I was extremely underwhelmed. I found the songs that they had released independently to have a lot of spirit to them, and a lot of spunk and life, and a lot of great bass lines that stood out to me, some strong lead guitars, and not that I don't hear that on this EP, it's just that whereas I felt like they were kind of leading a charge with the other singles, these feel maybe a little bit more void of life. I'm not trying to say that signing to Atlantic was a bad move whatsoever for Wallows. In fact, I think it was a smart one. They released the first single with Atlantic, which was Pictures of Girls, and while I found that one to be pretty good right off the bat, I found that with repeated listens, especially the second half of the song where Brayden is literally just singing, you should be down in Hollywood, over and over and over again, I understand that he's singing about this girl that he wants to be there with him in Hollywood or wherever he is, but it just gets so damn monotonous that I find myself having a hard time caring about coming back to it. They linked up with producer John Congleton to produce this EP, and I feel like while he has been known in the rock world, his production here makes the band perhaps feel a little bit compressed on some of these tracks. I don't feel like they have their full potential, or maybe we're not hearing as much of the drums, or the guitars, or even the vocals in places as much as we should. Some of the mixes just feel a bit off. Ground is a pretty good open for this record. I like the strong guitars on that one. It really pulls you into the vibe of this little EP. The vocals are nice, a nice little story going there as well, and it just feels like a little bit of like, I'm continuing to hold on hope, but sometimes it just has to push through and I'm not exactly sure what's going on. And then we have a track that reminds me of the Beatles in a way. That's track number three, Let the Sun In. There's a nice brass section on that one, and while the vocals do feel a little bit more mundane in places, I feel like the strong instrumental is able to pull it out of those ruts. I think you'll enjoy the track These Days, the second single from this EP. If you're just looking for kind of a breezy rock tune, it's kind of like a lazy Sunday type song, and I find myself thinking this is okay, but 
There's so many other songs that I've heard in recent memory that just stand out to me so much more, especially in the rock genre, so I don't think this is going to be one that demands repeated listens from me. I also have similar feelings about the track It's Only Right that comes near the beginning, and I really can't say that I'm a fan of 1980s horror film whatsoever. That one just feels a little bit too slow, a little bit flat, like I said before. I don't know if it's the production, the vocals, or the story that I just feel Feel like has been told before. I'm not exactly sure, but it just feels like it's trying to tie it into like old vintage stuff for the sake of just doing that. And I can't say that I'm impressed there. Overall on this EP, I am definitely let down because I loved all four of the singles. Some more than others, I have to say that probably Pleaser and Pulling Leaves Off of Trees with Suntan Close Behind, and obviously Uncomfortable as well. That's probably how I would rank the first of their four singles that they released independently. I liked all of those, loved some of them, and and then we get to the spring EP, and I just feel like they've kind of flattened out, and that kind of sucks. I thought that maybe they would lead more of a charge and have some tracks that match the energy of those early ones, and they definitely can still do that in the future. I'm holding out hope for a full length. Hopefully that will actually come in 2018. So for me personally, I'm going to have to rate the spring EP a 3 out of 5. I'm very excited to talk about the second album here, because this is being billed as the debut album by Soccer Mommy, aka Sophie Allison, and while she's had collection and other little collections that weren't actually called collection released before, this is being billed as the official debut. This is out on Fat Possum Records, and I'm so glad that I've had some time to absorb this record. I think that Sophie is incredibly talented for such a young age when it comes to just her vocals, her guitar playing, her skill overall, and her insight. Just from the opening track, you absolutely start to see with Still Clean, just a void that's inside of her, and she's able to pull that response out of the listener, and it's emotive, it's relatable, and it's absolutely something that you can just jam to. And that one starts off with just an airy guitar, mainly that and her voice, and it feels like you're just in the studio there with her actually getting a story. And as the record goes on, we get more and more and more of that. And on the opening track, she sings about being just an option, and I think that those insecurities Securities really display themselves in interesting forms as this record goes on. On the next song, we get Cool, and that's one that has an awesome music video that goes along with it, I might add. And that track has a lot of pep and spirit to it. She gets a little bit of like a call-out type energy where she maybe starts to get some feelings towards someone, and she's basically, at the end of the day, frustrated seemingly because she wants to be like this other girl, maybe just cool and fitting in for once. I really love the lush, spacious feel of some of the slower burns that we have on the record, like Scorpio Rock which is detailing a night and an empty parking lot somewhere and an experience. And obviously we have Still Clean, the opening track that I already detailed. And then you have something like Flaw, where she really truly opens up and kind of searches within for answers and admits that at times she can probably get petty and that sort of thing. But it's really interesting seeing coming from a younger person like this, where she's just able to, I guess, admit, but also hold on to these other ideals. And musically, it sounds fantastic. I love the energy of this track and it's not that it's so up tempo or anything like that it's just that her backing band does a great job with the guitars the drumming and everything like that you have these detailed bass moments that really pop off sometimes and then these other backing instrumentals that make this song shape up to be exactly what they are there are moments that I don't dig as much as others. I think that Blossom, Wasting All My Time is one that just gets a little bit slow for me. And then the interlude, I find myself just really like building hype for that final song, Wildflowers, which is definitely worth it. I think that song is fantastic, but I just find myself maybe drifting off a bit during those moments. The anger in comparisons to not wanting to be treated like an animal on your dog is actually extremely entertaining. I found her voice to be pretty much flawless, not only on that track, but a couple of the others that come towards the end of the record. My two favorites come back to back in the form of Last Girl, which once again addresses some insecurities head on, and I think that that one is the most just really fun, I guess, when you sink into the instrumental of it. The guitars are lush, really vibey, and vibrant in a way. The song is super catchy, but also something that a lot of people will probably relate to. And then right after that, we have a great start with an opening acoustic guitar that starts off slow, and that track is called Skin. 
I think her vocals there are absolutely gorgeous. And as we go on with that track, we just sink more into that lush feeling and the drums come in and those vocal melodies and the ooh, ooh, ooh. that's me doing a horrible impersonation, but you should definitely check out the album linked below and actually hear the good version for yourself. Clean by Soccer Mommy is definitely one of my favorite releases of the year so far. I can't wait to hear more from Sophie. I'm diving back into more of Soccer Mommy's original Bandcamp releases and it's just great stuff. I will link the album down below along with the other two that I'm talking about today. Make sure you check these out. For me personally, this is a strong four out of five. I hope you guys will check it out. That leaves only one band to talk about, and it's last but certainly not least. It's the Aces, an all-female band, and this is just something that I am really loving. It might not be like the best or most innovative thing ever, but it's a very enjoyable listen for me. Despite the fact that there are some songs that I find to be more filler than others, this girl group reminds me of the likes of Haim, and also a lot of 80s bands, 90s energy in a way too. Just some really standout bass grooves, a lot of chomping guitars, and just a feel that makes you know that you're listening to a band. These days, I feel like that's a little bit more rare. They are signed to Red Bull Records, an independent label, and I think that that's really pushing them in a good direction. They're able to have creative freedom, and they really broke out with their hit song, Stuck. They have an album version that's featured here on their debut album, When My Heart Felt Volcanic. And volcanic is something that you think of like an eruption or something like that. Mount Vesuvius going off in the background here. And the opening track really captivates you with that energy. You know what you're getting into with Volcanic Love. A super catchy melody and just a vocal hook that's going to keep you coming back for days with those driving guitars and the standout drumming as well. Some of these tracks feature tastefully tuned synthesizers running in the background steadily, but I love that this album isn't overwhelmed with any kind of like keys or outside influences or electronics or anything like that. The flourishes come from the instrumentals and the fact that they're able to build up momentum with the vocals, the bridges, and the instruments, the actual instruments here, like the drumming, the bass, and the guitars. I think that some of the tracks, like Love and His Bible, are absolutely intentionally cheesy, and for that reason, once I got past the initial, wow, you're loving his Bible? What kind of phrase is that? Once I got past that and threw that notion out the window, I started jamming to this song, kind of grooving and moving because it has that loose swing to it. And that's what a lot of this album is gonna do. The aces are able to lasso you, pull you back into the corral, and keep you dancing for more. The album has a a strong start. I think it kind of teeter-totters in the middle here and there, but it has an extremely strong closing section. The last four songs on this LP are some of my absolute favorites, and that kicks off with Bad Love. This is one that reminds me a lot of the 80s. It has a great guitar presence, even a little solo popping up on this track. And then right after that, we get one that's a little bit more experimental, and I like the dark edge to put it on the line. It keeps you in suspense leading up to the chorus, and then it kind of backs off again after the chorus. And that's just really a nice flair to throw in there. It offers a change of pace on this like 45 minute record. And then after that, we get the only ballad on this record, the only real one. This one really slows down the tempo. It's a piano styled ballad. And I think that Hurricane is kind of heartbreaking. It's something where she really puts herself out there and lays everything down on the line. And there are many relationship-driven songs here, and it's talking about love and everything that somebody maybe didn't do or things that weren't fulfilled or broken promises, everything like that. Hurricane is where everything truly comes to a pinnacle, and you just feel like you're going through this storm with her. And then right after that, we do close it on a little bit of a higher, more positive note. That track is waiting for you. And while it's not a top favorite, I have to say that I still love the energy here, and I think it's a great closer to this record. Mark my words, these four girls are going places. Don't blink twice because these girls are probably going to be playing one of the biggest festivals within the next five years. I pretty much guarantee it. If they stick together, I think that they're going to continue crafting awesome music. And while this debut album is really, really good, I think that they could even improve on it more in the future because some of the tracks sure they feel cheesy they feel maybe a little bit done before but you can't help but dance i think that they're going to improve on the formula as they continue going and for that reason i'm going to give it a strong 3.5 i was thinking about a four but i think that honestly for now this one does deserve a 3.5 out of five but it definitely deserves a listen from you what do you think about the new releases from soccer mommy the aces and wallows let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below were you already familiar with these groups or are they new to you did i just introduce you 
Let me know what you think if you're just checking them out for the first time, or if you've listened to them a hundred times. Sound off your thoughts in the comment section down below. If there's other reviews that you'd like to see me do, then drop a comment there and upvote some of the ones that you see that you really want me to tackle, and then drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new, and if you'd like to, please support me on Patreon. It would be greatly appreciated. It helps the content keep coming on both of my channels on a weekly basis. If you would like to see another recent video that I did, then you can tap right over here, or another recent one right over here. Thank you so much for watching. Find me on social media at all these links in the description down below, and I'll see you soon on ARTV.